The Kansas City Chiefs just wrapped up training camp rookie day one, and we got a special article from Arrowhead Pride from Pete Space Sweeney. And guys, I apologize for the lighting, but it is 2.30 in the afternoon as I am filming this, and it is 2.30 in the morning for me as I work overnight, so I am trying to limit the bright light exposure that I have. But there are five notes that I took from the article that I thought were worth going over a little bit. And again, these are Pete's observations, not my own, so give him all of the credit, but there are some things worth breaking down in my opinion. Uh, the very first tweet that I thought was worth looking at, the non-rookies in attendance, other than the quarterbacks, are offensive linemen Chukwabuka, Godrick, tight end Garrett Prince, linebacker Leo Chanel, safety Trey Dean, defensive end Truman Jones, and cornerback Naze Johnson. Now, I don't know if these practices... Are so I thought the one that really sticks out to me on this is Leo Chanel, right? He is probably the starting linebacker this year, but he is adopting that probable starting linebacker position from the newly departed Willie Gay, who finds himself in New Orleans. So are these practices optional? Because I thought we had seen that Leo Chanel was nursing an injury earlier in the week, something minor. So I don't know if you only get to participate insofar as you spent most of last season on the practice squad or you are injured and you are getting yourself back into shape in that way, or if players like Leo Chanel, who is entering his third season, are able to just kind of say, yeah, no, I'll, I'll be there. So if this is Leo Chanel just deciding, hey, if there's football to be played, if there's a helmet to be worn, if there's shoulder pads anywhere, I want a part of it. That's truly impressive and or worrisome for Leo Chanel. But the other name on this, there's two other names on this list that are very compelling outside of Naze Johnson. Naze Johnson obviously coming back from an injury from last season. But Trey Dean and Truman Jones are very compelling uh, players to me. Very compelling entrance on this list. Trey Dean is a guy that football guys absolutely loved coming out of college. And then he ran a disastrous 40-yard dash and all of a sudden fell out of the draft, was picked it up as was picked, was picked up as a UDFA by the Jets. The Jets had a stacked defense. He was then later cut by the Jets. No shame in that. Uh judging by the Jets' defense from last season, and then subsequently signed with the Kansas City Chiefs. And he's got a real shot. Trey Dean has a real shot if he is able to not look like he runs the 40 that he runs. Truman Jones was an, an extremely active player in college, uh, went to Harvard, so... I'm very intrigued by Truman Jones, and I think that he could be a contributor, at least in a rotation sense for the Kansas City Chiefs. Moving on, wide receiver Xavier Worthy was in fact, quote, eased in, end quote, as Andy Reid mentioned, but did much more than we, than we saw during OTA looks. Worthy had the play of the day in a 50-50 ball from quarterback Ian Book going up against Johnson deep down the sideline. He brought in the pass as he fell to the ground. Now, a couple things worth noting there. Number one, Naze Johnson is a very fast guy, which means that Xavier Worthy's speed has translated to the NFL. But Xavier Worthy's speed is a 4-2-1 40-yard dash, which means Naze Johnson is able to keep up with a 4-2-1 type guy. That is important if Naze Johnson is to have a future on the Kansas City Chiefs. It also means Naze Johnson is probably doing better than I thought he might be by this point in time if he is, in fact, tracking down a 4-2-1 type guy down the sideline early on. Now, he did make the catch, uh, Xavier Worthy, so Naze Johnson's 
extremely fast 40 and 42 inch vertical, I believe, are not uh, bulletproof. But Xavier Worthy made the catch. We have heard time and again and seen time and again. Every time Xavier Worthy drops a pass, the national media, the local media, everybody on Twitter, everybody apparently in my comments section is um, telling me about all of the drops from Xavier Worthy. I think that is more from the Chiefs fan perspective out of paranoia than anything else. And I have to admit, I'm I'm in on that paranoia a little bit as well. I would hate for um, Xavier Worthy to look. All he has to do is drop the ball a little less often than MVS, and the offense is upgraded from last year, where the offense, oh, I don't know, what did they do last season? Won the Super Bowl. So I think Xavier Worthy is is going to be an upgrade over MVS. I really do, and I think that that's going to become apparent very soon here. The next tweet, the other pass Worthy caught during 7-on-7 work came on a bad low pass in the flat by Patrick Mahomes, which Patrick Mahomes quickly acknowledged. Bad ball, good catch, said Mahomes. Now, two things worth taking from this tweet in particular. This is two outstanding catches mentioned from Worthy. Two catches where Worthy had to leave his catch radius, basically, right? This is the catch radius, but he is diving for the first ball and going low, whatever that means, on this here, the second one. It might be that Xavier Worthy drops tons of passes in drills. It might be that Xavier Worthy drops tons of passes thrown by members of the coaching staff. It might be that Xavier Worthy is terrible catching the ball coming out of the gauntlet. It might be that Xavier Worthy simply can't get his hands around a football that is tossed out of a jugs machine. Maybe, maybe Xavier Worthy is just really good at catching the football in football circumstance. So that would be helpful, especially compared to last season where MVS and Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore and, 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 and struggled catching the football. So if, if the worst thing we can say about Xavier Worthy's catching is he can't do it in shoulder pads and shorts, or he can't do it when there's no one in his face, then I'm willing to take that. But the second thing worth acknowledging here Mahomes calling himself out. Now, I have no I have no insight into last season, right? I'm just on the sidelines like you guys. Or not on the sidelines, I'm watching the game like you guys. It was strange how poorly a a sports particular uh, frame of reference can go when you're actually talking about the sport. But I am watching the games just like you guys. But I do know that one of the reasons that players start doing silly things like dropping the football and dropping the football a lot when they are professional athletes who have caught the football well enough to get to where they're at, Kadarius Tony, it's a confidence problem. The guy is overthinking it while the ball is in the air on the way to him. Now, I have no insight into last season and whether or not Patrick Mahomes always did the my bad bro last year as well. But seeing him do it and seeing him do it to a guy that it, at least as far as the media is concerned has struggled through the mini camp, the rookie camp, and now rookie training camp, seeing him try to pick that guy up in this fashion is, um, is a good thing. Now, Probably my favorite tweet on the day. This is Patrick Mahomes talking about Jared Wiley. I I anticipate he comes in and learns and gets better and better. The physicality and the size and speed, you see that. Now we get to test the mental ability and that tight end position is hard in the NFL, especially in Coach Reed's offense. You have to be able to block and make all the blocking assignments, but also do all the passing stuff too. He's doing a great job with that so far, and we're going to keep pushing him to see what we can do. 
there's going to be a lot of competition in that room, obviously with Travis and Noah, but even with the other guys that we have. I'm excited for him to get in there and work and come back and hopefully get a big, be a big impact on our team. This is obviously just coach talk. This is obviously just the way that Patrick Mahomes went on Rich Eisen's show and said, I mean, I just talk as long as possible without saying anything. This is that, right? But it's not. Because even when you're doing the coach talk, you still have to find things to talk about. Never has he talked about Jared Wiley in the past. So he's having to fill this filler with something. And the somethings that he's putting in there are a little bit telling because he keeps giving us things that are going to happen, which maybe I'm reading too much into it, but says to me that this is a player that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and the offense in general are expecting to be involved in other things in the future. He gives a caveat that, yes, Jared Wiley's competing with Noah and all the other guys we have. That's in there. That's true. I don't think that it is as true as the gobbledygook coach talk that Patrick Mahomes has thrown in here. I think, and I'm reading into this, obviously, and this is all colored by my opinion, obviously. And yeah, I'm a little bit partial to the work that I have done as far as researching these players, etc. cetera, uh, goes. But I have to believe that Mahomes on Wiley, Mahomes talking about Jared Wiley, Mahomes-Wiley connection is going to be something that we are going to hear about time and again this season. I really do believe that if the Kansas City Chiefs have... Now, he one of the, the reasons I want to talk about this, he starts talking about the blocking. I think he mentions it twice in here. He talks about mental ability. Make all the blocking assignments. I think that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to try to get Travis Kelsey off the field a little bit more this year. Makes total sense. Save him for the playoffs. Save the wear and tear on his body. If you're going to run the football in the NFL, more likely than not, it's on first and or second downs. Saving Travis Kelsey for third and fourth downs having a guy like Jared Wiley on the field for first and second downs, where he will have to know the blocking assignments, where he will have to be able to block, where he will have to have the mental ability to remember, is this a pass? Is this a block? Is it to my side? Is it to the weak side? All of those things. So I think that the Chiefs are definitely prepping for someone to step into a first and second down tight end type role for them this season. I think the the preferred method for that would be Jared Wiley. And the last note that I wanted to talk about, the last tweet sent out that I wanted to mention here, these passing looks, talking about seven on seven and, and the like, these passing looks can be tough for breakups, Yet we saw four in seven on seven on Wednesday. Cornerback Miles Battle got Mahomes. Cornerback Chris Roland Wallace and safety Jaden Hicks got Wentz. And safety Trey Dean got Ola Doken. Guys, there's a video on the channel for Miles Battle. There's a video on the channel for Jaden Hicks. I believe I had to delete the one that I made on Trey Dean to get back on the good great in the good graces of um YouTube, but Miles Battle, in my opinion, is going to be one of the steals of the UDFA class. Jaden Hicks, according to basically everyone, was one of the steals of the NFL draft. The fact, so the fact that these players, the fact that we're seeing Miles Battle mentioned at all, 
is heartwarming for me. I, this guy, if you have any time, go watch that video. This guy has all the tools to step in. Now, I think he needs a year of development. I think he's absolutely a practice squad guy this year. I don't want it to make it sound like he's not. I think he's a practice squad guy this year. But I think he has starting potential in the NFL. We've talked time and again on the channel about how Chris Roland Wallace is an NFL type guy. How Chris Roland Wallace is the type of player that just kind of falls out of the draft. Looks like that might be the case. Um, this is reinforcing that type of thing. Jaden Hicks already making an impact. And then Trey Dean that we've talked about already before in this video getting a breakup. Of course, it's, it's on Oladok and it's on a backup quarterback. It's not on Patrick Mahomes. The, the Miles Battle, that's on Patrick Mahomes. Miles Battle got a breakup on Patrick Mahomes. But this is a, this. these are further signs that the defensive backs for the Kansas City Chiefs are absolutely a powerhouse position for the team. And if there are any if there are any needs that pop up in training camp, it might be a defensive back that we see get wheeled and dealed in order to get something in return. That's all I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, this is the second video that I uh, have posted today. I had one about Kyle Sheets being being signed, the UDFA wide receiver, six foot two, two hundred and seventeen pounds, four five two forty, uh, thirty seven inch vertical for the Kansas City Chiefs. Now was a New Orleans Saint uh, in his first UDFA stint. Finds himself now a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. Must be. Nice. That is all I have for this video. Uh, hitting the like button helps me out. If you find yourself here by chance but not designed, consider hitting the subscribe button because the Chiefs are the only thing I talk about on this channel, and I hope to have you back for the next one.